Hi, everyone. This is the objectives of this class. We talk about OWASP. OWASP, it's an open web application security project. OWASP has a long history. It started by 2001 and it's almost 18, 19 years old and it has a major contribution to the web security and uh, it offers multiple projects, even the OWASP Zap web vulnerability testing tool, which is freely available and it was developed by OWASP and supported to us. By end of this module, we'll be also talking about the software development lifecycle security. So the security essential SDLC model We'll be using OWASP SAM. The OWASP SAM is a software assurance maturity model. And uh, by 2017-18, we got SAM, OWASP SAM 1.5. Right now we have OWASP SAM 2.0. The top 10 web applications vulnerabilities are the first one, SQL injection. SQL injection, A.2 broken authentication. It's simply an insecure or inaccurate authentication method. In web application, authentication and authorization and session management are more important. So when we miss the basics, I mean, this is the very fundamental of building a web application. When we miss on to it, your application is no longer yours. Anytime it can be taken by someone else. And also the exposure of sensitive data. Your server configuration file is so secure. So if it's exposed, Anyone can know the configuration of a server so that we can use the misconfiguration or sensitive data. We can make use of it. So XML external entities. This is a newly added vulnerability on 2017 external XML vulnerabilities are. So what is XML? XML is a hypertext markup language, which is unique. I mean, mainly this is used to structure the data in the web application. Even a JSON does the same task XML XML. It's just to structure your data appropriately and to pass the data on a proper manner. Instead of sending the data insecure on in order or everything, there is a common standard called DTD, document type description, under which the XML, I'll show you some example of it. XSE, XSE vulnerability, and when we search for an image, similarly, this is how it looks like. What external entities XML environment? So nowadays everyone will know that you can log into your Facebook automatically or uh, when you try to log in, you can use your Facebook credential or a Gmail account to log into the site. Only thing you need to click on allow access. So automatically the new site will fetch information from your Facebook account or Google account on your username, email address and other status as well. So what exactly I, I does is I'll create a fake website and I'll try to get you into my website and make you to log in. I mean, make you register using your existing Google or Facebook web page. And actually the Facebook is more secure and Facebook will not be giving the complete information of Facebook interface or Facebook in infrastructure. Instead, I'll be just including a system entry, the file, the password.xml, the password.entries, etc wherein I will be making the Facebook retrieve data on the local information, but it will not parse to the exact user. Even the user browser will not notify. It is reading the password data, or reading the system configuration, or reading it the information from it. But as an error message, the error message will be logged on my server where I host the fake website. On the error logs, the information what I requested will be obviously available. So this is like tricking something similar to the cross site for forgery and it's somewhat added newly uh, as we integrated most of the OAuth tokens or SAML authentication. We, I mean, take advantage of these kind of open security token authentications. And again, the A5 would be the broken access control. Broken access control is simply, it's not giving the permanent or right access to the right person. Sometimes if a standard user gains access to admin user account, or if any user account were sometimes not able to perform his activity and his rights were limited. These are a few examples of it. Security misconfiguration. Security misconfiguration is obviously happening on all the environment because we need to understand any and every manufacturer of a product. It may be hardware, it may be a software, or it may be any application or any server, freeware or paid software, anything in any, it may be. It will be designed in having the mind for the general public. I mean, general enterprise. 
once we purchase an application or we purchase an infrastructure, we need to configure, we need to alter it as per the requirement of our business and nature of our business. All the configuration, all the settings are open and freely available. So when we have the unnecessary services and unnecessary configurations open, it's obviously a way for attacker to come into your place and gain more access into it. When you install a web server, you need to install the right components, only the required components and to provide right configuration. It likes goes to the same operating system. It goes to the web application firewall and also the network firewall. Anything and everything needs a proper configuration. A not configuring is also a misconfiguration. If you just installed everything and you did not configure username and password, anybody can log in. Even not configuring considered as a misconfiguration. So it always persists. Even from 2010 and before, still 2017, it happens. It is a lack of knowledge or lack of responsibility or they missed missing the fundamentals, giving the cause for it. Again, the cross-site scripting. What is a cross-site scripting? Cross-site scripting is inputting values in username field or password field. So when I use a username and password, this is how an example looks like. For example, I go to vanillaforms.org. What I do? Please take a note of this web page. This is a freely available website where you can log into. This site is available for you to practice web hacking. Okay, web hacking means that this is a poorly designed site. We need to find the vulnerability and identify the vulnerability and we can test our hacking skills step by step. So I'm trying to register as a new user. So I'm just signing up. You can also sign up in the site in the meantime. Exploiting a vulnerability for identifying a vulnerability. There is we do not require high stuff. I mean, we don't need some complex tools or paid professional tools with built in features or add ons from Firefox and Chrome. We can easily manipulate things and we can bypass the security of any web page. A record test was my username login. When you log into it, you will be getting a basic missions mission number one mission number two. So when you keep on progress, you can go beyond to the next level. For example, I'll go to the basic level uh, basic. This gives me a, a form. This level is called uh, it is for an idiot test. I mean, just to ensure that whether I'm an idiot or not, it's testing giving me this basic simple task. I just need to enter a password to pass through to the next session. So what I would need, I need to understand the source code. What is the source code and how it was written in Chrome and Firefox? We have an option to inspect the elements or view the source code. So by using the shortcut key control plus U, it takes you to the source code when you need to particularly work on a particular element in a web page. Anything and everything is called as an element. So if I mention this element, we inspect an element. This is called a text field. This is a button submit button. Where is the form? OK, so when I click on this is the post method when I enter the form and it goes to that. OK, this is also tells me the first level are extremely easy. The password is here. It's mentioned on a comment. Let us try this whether we will be able to go on. Fortunately, I show this site. I'm not an idiot. I'm able to break into the very basic level and going on the next level. This is a scenario network security. Sam set up a password protected script. He made it load the real password from an unencrypted file and compare the to the password that enters. OK, so Sam is creating a secure password, but he stores the username and password on an unsecure text file. So we need to identify where the unsecured text file locates. It's the similarly, we go for the domain. OK, passes to the mission basic index. This is the form it's submitting. So it obviously takes some time for us to identify where exactly any clue in the web page where it obviously takes to. OK, however, he neglected to upload the file. Let me try basic one equal to one combination error message. So why don't I try a blank password? The simple basic mistakes. I mean, it's just an example when application owner does not upload the exact document. What happens is it's easy for anyone because initially we'll be trying the level. What is the password and how was the mechanism works on it? Where the actually password is getting fetched? 
but in this scenario the actual person does not upload it just for us to think something where well, let's go on for a third thing this time network security sam remembered to upload the file but there were deeper problem in that okay somehow the site creator uploaded a file the password file which is obviously in stored on the same location or some other location we need to identify let me go to the source and also go for the inspection of what exactly it goes to okay right now in previous value it goes to your password.php okay obviously we will not be getting anything as password.php but at least some clue in it okay let me try accessing it oh perfect when i tried password.php to try opening as a source code i get some code here what is this shall i try it so this is how pathetic few websites would be i'm not a genius enough to break into the site i just use logic when i check into the inspect object it went to your password.php something which is new when I try to open it it gave me the password so we do not expect all the sites would be extremely easy enough or extremely breakable but sometimes think sometime logically thinking on it for fourth example this time sam hard coded the password into a script however the password is no longer complex and sam is often forgetful so he wrote a script that would email him password to his okay so this time what happens is usually password was written i mean we can enter an email to retrieve the password let us check how it works let me inspect he wrote a script this is a clue let us re find what was it what he does i think the script is not embedded here but i do see a value sam at hack this site.com what is the application logic is it simple example sam wrote a script whenever he forgets password he clicks on the send password to sam it triggers an email so in the input field a hidden value field i found an email address named sam this is the email address which i got from this any element on a web application can be modified during runtime real time every element text box the submit button input field everything and anything on a web page or web application element can be manipulated i'll try a dummy mail first okay i modified the value to dummy at dummy.com i'm sending the email the password reminder successfully sent to okay if this is not your email address then it will not be successfully sent perfect so we have on one more way we try that so i can understand the logic that a script can verify whether it's sam or not so initially it might also verify whether sam or not let me try one more thing i'm using a comma because usually there is a option or feature available we can add a comma separating multiple email addresses and send so let me try to trick this application sometime so let me get in my email address and try whether it's now working or not simc okay let me check whether i'm receiving it or not i got the password so let me log into my gmail account this is an email from sam so this is the password i received from him 986 let me type so i received the password as 9861279 so when i submit what happens that's so simple so this is how easy for us to bypass the basic authentication so it's easy for us uh, you can use this site hackthissite.com to learn attack 8 attack vector 8 is insecure decentralized serialization so it is also similar to the misconfiguration etc due to this it is multiple vectors multiple possibilities of getting a remote code execution what is remote code execution attacker running a script or running a code or running a system function on your web server which performs regular task but which is not intended for the web service or web application and the particular task will give some gain or profit or any good things to the user using components with known vulnerabilities this is also one more important thing whenever we install a software whenever we install applications even microsoft windows or mac operating system are not 
worldb is one such site we go for then nist vulnerability database so you can go for multiple sites there are uh, even the nist is so trusted so you can search for it you can search for the product wise what we call we call apple okay search so when we search for apple components we get multiple cve ID. cve stands for common vulnerabilities and exploits following by a number cve number it's 2018 and it were released and this was the vulnerability id 3214 you can see the scoring it's 5.3 medium 5.0 medium cvss stands for common vulnerability scoring system so you can try researching for any known vulnerabilities and try to avoid the vulnerable components in developing your applications so so these are the top 10 vulnerabilities available to novas top 10 okay thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning